birds are very zesty today. They are excited to be alive, as am I, as hopefully are you. I see that you're all out there. <clears throat> um, John Cromer, I'm glad to see you, my friend. Grace, Grace and I chatted yesterday, uh, was it yesterday, the day before, a couple days ago? That was really nice. Marilyn, Kathleen, Janice, Esther, Susan, Denise in Utah, Marta, Eliza. Hello, Eliza. And uh, it's great to see you all. Holly, Catherine in British Columbia, who's got a fresh sketchbook that she's starting. That's excellent. She's been carrying around that sketchbook since SketchCon. Time to crack it open and start filling it up. Jay Fadness in rainy Portland, Oregon. I'm sorry it's rainy there. It is beautiful here in uh, sunny Phoenix, Arizona. So thanks all for being here. And let's get down to it, shall we? Um, completely skipped reading the newspaper this morning. To heck with it, I said. Sat down and wrote something. I wrote a little essay that was nice. I used to begin my days by writing blog posts, and I kind of got out of the habit, but it is my favorite thing to do, to get up at my sweatshirt ties are uneven. Oh, no. There we go. <clears throat> Gosh, there's some OCD people in the audience. That's fine. I understand. I suffer from the same. Um, yes, so I got up. I did some writing, and uh, that made me feel good. And then I started thinking about what we're going to do today, and that made me feel even better. Then, so one of the funny things that's, that I've been thinking about during this whole time has been flashing back to earlier days. I'm reading a really amazing book called This Is Happiness, which is about, uh, it's a novel about Ireland in the 1950s, and it takes place in this little village that is having electricity installed in it for the first time. So it's like this enormous change. Good morning. Okay, yes. Sorry. Um, work intruded. Um, yes, so anyway, this book is uh, is all about this momentous change that's happening to these people who have been living kind of the same way for hundreds of years and suddenly uh, electricity is coming into there. And it's also amazingly written. I, I strongly recommend it. But anyway, I've been thinking about other times and thinking, thinking about war times and World War II. Um, you know, it's partly, I think, because we are staying with my sister-in-law and my brother-in-law. And uh, so it reminds me of like the days when families used to live together. It just seems like a, a picking in America, that's not a common thing anymore. Yes, hello, good morning. Here's my friend. Let's see. Here. That's Luna. Um, yes, so we're staying with relatives, which I think in some parts of the world is a common thing, but is, um, I don't know, it's just unusual for us. You know, we used to like graduate from college and go off and start your own life. And now suddenly here we are living with family. And um, another thing that's made me think about bygone times or, or things that we've forgotten is evaporated milk. I haven't even thought about it really since maybe I was a kid. Condensed milk a little bit, but evaporated milk. Well, JJ went out and bought us a case of evaporated milk. And first I was like, wait, what? She said, yeah, you know, that way we have milk. We don't have to think about it and to go to the grocery store. And I thought, well, that's, um, what is that even going to be like? Well, here it is in my coffee. It's not great, but it's not bad. It's evaporated milk. It's got added vitamin D. So, yeah, that's fine. One more thing, you know. Next, we'll start, I don't know. What else can we do from other eras where people had other ways of doing things that may seem appropriate now when they never did before. Here's the thing. We realized last night we hadn't watched television for five days. I sort of assumed that we would be like in lockdown. We'd be like uh, Netflixing constantly, but we haven't been. We've been playing cards. We've been sitting around the fire pit. We've been listening to music. We've been having conversations. We've been cooking dinner. It's been really nice. So powdered eggs, good point. Powdered eggs, suggests Darren. I like that idea. 
kind of, but not really. Yeah. So yes, evaporated milk. Um, what else? Baking bread. Good point. Yes, Tina brings out, uh, there it is. This is happiness, Neil Williams. I don't know if you've read it, Tina, but so, so nice. Such a comforting, fun book. So, um, yeah, I mentioned, did I mention um, Three Men in a Boat? Not to mention the dog. I think that was my book that I mentioned yesterday. Anyway, so today I wanted to do an exercise, which I love doing. I've done that lots of times in the past, and uh, I shared it originally with some of you when I made this class called How to Draw Without Talent, which is just me sort of explaining the basics of drawing. If you've never mastered or even attempted the basics of drawing, check it out. But meanwhile, today I thought I would play this one thing. All you're going to need today, pen and paper. It's going to be pretty simple. By the way, I've also, I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm starting to put, to refine the opening kind of title card that I set up five minutes before and I had the revelation that I should put the supplies you'll need on that thing. So if you come here early, you can check it out and I'll list what we're going to use today and then you can go and get that while my sort of um, new theme music. How about that theme music, right? It's, to me, it sounds a bit like something from uh, some of the 1970s chat show. Uh, uh, Dick Cavett comes to mind. So I'm going to stick with that for a little while. See, why not have a theme to the party? Okay, so um, Laura has read it. Excellent. Good. I see other people have too. And Laura. Good. So, all right. So, t so let me um, play this video for you. Check it out. And I'm going to start the exercise as it's playing. You can feel free to join whenever you want to. Here we go. One, two, three. Ha, 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 ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you ever sing in a choir or go Christmas caroling? It's pretty magical. You may not be able to carry a note, but together the whole group always sounds really awesome. I'll let you in on a secret. It's kind of true of drawing as well. The more drawings on a page, the better they look. Even if every drawing is kind of lousy individually, the collection gives the whole page a lot of power and interest. Let's give it a try. For this exercise, we're going to make a series of small squares across the page. They don't need to be perfect squares, just don't draw them with a ruler. Just practice drawing slightly wonky straight lines and make a bunch of frames. Okay, now let's fill each of those squares with a drawing of a tiny corner of your house. If you want, you can use your cardboard frame to define the subject. Approach it like, to, like the first drawings that we did, copying one square into the other. Your toothbrush in a mug, a door handle, the edge of your blender, part of the vegetable drawer in the fridge. We're gonna draw quickly, just two to three minutes per frame. If you want, set a timer on your watch or your phone to move things along. And when the bell goes off, find another little scene and fill in the next square, keep going. You can do this whole project at once, or you can fill in a new square whenever you have some downtime during the day. Take it with you when you leave to do errands, or draw in bed, or draw moments from the TV screen. And when the whole page is filled, I'm sure you'll be surprised at how good it looks and how many different things you could draw. This is a great exercise to keep going with. Fill a few more pages in the weeks ahead. It'll help you tackle all sorts of subjects, and even if the drawing's lousy, the page is gonna rock. Yes. All right. So have you got your got your squares ready? I'm starting. I started this uh, while I was waiting for you to join me, and I'm just sort of drawing things that I'm seeing around in the backyard. Now I'm working on uh, that can of evaporated milk, and um, you know. So the idea is just like just it's almost like little snapshots of what's going on around you, you know. And again, the drawings themselves are just they're, they're they're sketches really you know they're they're not it's not essential that you do something perfect um 
you know, the whole like the pleasure in this is the accumulation. Okay. Um, and, you know, Janice says that hers are too small. That's fine. You could do little tiny ones. I mean, I'm doing, I mean, how big is mine? Look, it's like the width of my pen. No, not even. So they don't have to be very big. Um, or they don't have to be, or they can be small. Uh, I think the smaller they are, the easier they are to fill up, right? Because you don't have to worry about um, doing you know, too much stuff in it. And it's really just an opportunity to to look in a new way, to look at the world around you in these little kind of increments and to just find little interesting visual um, compositions. You know, it's a, it's a way of practicing compositions, I think. I think compositions is something that people, you know, we all struggle with a bit, which is, which is how do you actually compose your page so that it uh, is pleasing or telling a story or, you know, dramatic in some way. And um, that is the opportunity here is just to test it out, to practice stuff without having to really commit to some kind of major work of art. You're just just trying shapes and seeing how they work. And, and you can also, you know, you can cut stuff off. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm cutting off bits of this mug because I don't really care that, uh, that I'm not showing the whole thing. And, you know, so that's about all the time I want to spend on that one. Let's try something different. So let's just move around, just do a bunch. Um, I did... Um, I did decide not to set a timer. I kind of mentioned that in the video. Hey, you could set a timer. And you, why, did I, why did I have to use that uh, idiot voice? Anyway, you couldn't set a timer or you cannot set a timer. Um, we set timers yesterday. So I thought, you know, it's enough of me bossing you around and telling you how much time to spend doing things. Just decide for yourself. Okay. You know, but again, don't, you don't have to spend a huge amount of time. You could. You could spend days doing each one of these squares, but that would sort of defeat the purpose, right? So, you know, just have fun, stay loose, keep going. So, what can I tell you? I'll tell you some other stories while we're drawing. I spoke to my son yesterday. Um, he's doing quite well indeed under the circumstances. Um, and he is, he is thinking about going on a, a, a camping trip. Girlfriend won access to, um, one of those vans that you can, that has a bed in it. So they're thinking about hitting the road. I tried to think about it a bit. I had to think, like, is that a great idea? But then I thought, well, it's probably not that much worse of an idea than staying locked in their apartment in Los Angeles. I think being locked in a car that's going somewhere, as long as they're safe and they are very safe. These two are, they're like the pick the poster children, poster people for how to, you know, avoid contact with other people, how to, they're really good at cleaning stuff. They watch lots and lots of videos on the best way to sanitize things. So, you know, um, that's what they're thinking of doing. And I think that's kind of cool. I mean, they might actually come through Phoenix, but I'm still not sure whether it's wise that we actually see each other. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird kind of dilemma to have, whether to see your own child who's visiting down, but... I don't know. I don't know. Don't know what to say. But as I said, he's doing well. He's he, as he said to me yesterday, he said, you know, like the initial anxiety of all the new things has kind of died down. And he said, now it's just kind of like figuring out the best way to live, figuring out the best stuff to do. I think that's good. I like that. That's you know, as I said to you a couple of days ago, um, you know, that's been my advice to him is like, just use your creativity to to solve these problems that you're facing don't be 
overwhelmed by worry, but use your imagination. So, and it's taken him to this idea of, uh, of, of going on the road. So, yeah. Hey, I'm sorry, Lisa, about your waiting in somewhere else. I, I had a problem with, with uh, this whole setup this morning, and it just, it just got screwed up. I'm sorry. I'm thinking that I've been trying to do this on multiple channels, and I think it's just too complicated. I'm just going to do it on YouTube. Hi, Patrick. I'm not in New York City. Actually, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, it is, and I am outside. Yes, I'm in in the garden here, surrounded by. Lots of squawking birds, which is quite nice. So the fun thing about this exercise is, is it becomes like a mini kind of diary almost of what's around you, you know, and it's, and to me, these little drawings are like, are so, they're like the equivalent of uh, like Lay's potato chips. You know, you can just keep, you draw one, and then you go like, eh, let me just try one more, you know? Remember that they used to say, bet you can't just eat one, bet you can't just draw one of these little squares. And the more you draw, as I said in that video, the more you draw, the nicer the page starts to look. Even if any individual drawing is kind of crappy, together they make for a nice kind of composition and... Um, and you can think about it. you can think about the, the composition of each square relative to the others around it, you know, if you want to. I'm not really bothering with that, but you could say, yeah, I've got too many um, kind of complicated scenes. Let me just do one single object. You could do that. That could be not a bad thing to do. Um, for those of you who've taken How to Draw That Talent, my course... Um, I'd be interested to know how this particular assignment affected you and whether you ever came, kind of went back and did it again. That's sort of the interesting thing I'm finding of just doing this whole exercise of sharing some of my favorite lessons with you is it's an opportunity to go, kind of go back. You know, we take these classes and we think, yeah, yeah, done that and, you know, moved on. But there's so many layers to these things and, and new opportunities. And, and also what I find is like you learn something um, you know, you take a class, you learn something, and then you go on with your life and you learn other things. And then you, when you come back to one of those earlier lessons, you might suddenly go, oh, you know what? Actually, this other thing that I learned makes this lesson seem completely different to me. Or there's a new way I can use that particular uh, lesson thing that I picked up there. So I'd be interested to know if that's kind of the case with you. Um, Mimeism is looking forward to adding some color. Yes, that is a nice thing to do. You know, and what you could do is maybe just give yourself one color. You know, maybe just say to yourself, I'm going to um, just use, I'm going to try that. Like, for instance, I could just say, sort of, um, I'm just going to color in the background. This one. You know, and you could use that color, maybe compositionally, to tie together stuff in the different squares. You know, so you could have like a nice blue background here, and then maybe try something different somewhere else. Coloring is fun, isn't it? Just coloring. It's something that uh, we knew as children. But then when we become artists, it's not coloring anymore. It's, you know, painting or adding color or tonally enhancing the vituperative nature of the uh, particular uh, piece of visual. Uh, yeah, but just coloring is, is, is still a very pleasurable thing um, that is that feels simple and satisfying because you know just what to do. Just color that thing in. You know, I drew this this old tree that is in the corner of the garden. It's this it's obviously a tree that they cut down or they 
they just decided the entail of this tree were just we're sick of it and we're just going to lob off all the branches and they did and it has it was basically like looked like a big kind of stump in the ground and then suddenly it started to sprout all these amazing um branches and new leaves and it just it would not be held down well i never finished this this is um this is a can of insect uh, mosquito spray i guess it is insect repellent it's kind of nice i have to say to be worrying about mosquitoes again it's like winter is over you know mosquitoes suck <laughs> as it were um you know it's just a sign that hey back in nature it's just so nice about this being in nature um, breathing fresh air sitting in the sunshine listening to the birds hopefully you can do that where you are maybe not maybe you're sitting in the rain bemoaning your fate I understand all my friends in New York are doing that I feel sorry for them Yeah, so you see that blue kind of, you know, as the Big Lebowski would say, it pulls the room together. And uh, not a bad thing. Should we keep going? Three men in a boat. <laughs> yes. Yes, Allie. So you know that book, right? Um, Dan has animated pages like this in PowerPoint. That's interesting. Kind of a weird medium to be uh, experimenting in, but there's no such thing as a weird medium, right? Nils says, I learned back in high school, I tired of all the art exercises, and now I remember that they were cool. I just couldn't think outside the box and how cool and helpful they are. I know, youth is wasted on the young. But it's true, when we're younger, you know, we're like we're in a constant struggle to be right stuff. So when people teach us things, a lot of times it can be like, uh, yeah, I know that, that's dumb, whatever, moving on. And then, then you get older and you say, oh, wait a minute, that was actually kind of cool. I mean, I think about like, like studying history. His studying history in high school was like the worst chore. It was so hateful, right? Memorizing dates and battles and, ugh. And now I think history is incredible. History is like the most amazing stories of our species, right? All the things that we can learn from the weird stuff that other people went through and the decisions good and bad that they made. You know, and yet when we were in high school, it just seemed like, oh, God. I don't know if that's just poor teaching. I don't think so. I don't think it was the teacher's fault. I think it's just mule, mulish teenagers, which we all were at one point or another. I don't know if any of you are teachers or were teachers, but that's a heck of a job to have had. Extremely important, of course, and also extremely hard. My niece has just become a biology teacher in Texas. She just started that this year. Her school year has been cut off, obviously. She's trying to figure out how to teach virtually I think she teaches seventh grade. Yeah. So. It's a challenging but important job. Um, so that, like, look at this particular thing that I'm drawing now. Completely abstract. You can't even really tell what it is. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Actually, I'll give a free prize to anybody who can identify what exactly this is. Because if you do, I can only assume that you have some kind of like a monitor, surveillance monitor on this backyard, and you're able to peek in at what I'm doing. Because how else on earth would you possibly know that this is part of a barbecue and a box of shop towels? 
There's a lot of weird things in this backyard. Because we're living in chaos. Hike, and instead we decided we're going to finish cleaning up my mother-in-law's house so that it's ready to be sold. And um, also, like, really clean the house that we're living in. We're all working, and uh, we, we are, we're kind of like this weird commune of middle-aged people. Sitting at our computers all day, drinking beer in the early evening, playing cards. And now we're going to have household duties. Maybe we can get make one of those chore wheels. <laughs> That's a funny idea. I just thought of that. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can make a chore wheel. See if I can get the others to abide by it. All right, you make the beds. You sweep the floors. You peel the potatoes. You know who I miss? And it's not you're not allowed to, to you're not allowed to like him anymore. Is Garrison Keeler? I mean, I know he made some terrible mistakes, but boy, I do miss like Wobegon sometimes. Heather says I'm not happy with most of these little sketches. I think what's here isn't interesting to me because I'm here all the time. Right. But here's what I would say, Heather, is try and see them as weird angles on things. Try and see them as little snapshots. Can you do that? So don't look at them as like, oh, no, I have to draw this can. I have to draw this thing. Instead, think about what's a weird perspective on this. Here's a thing. Lie on the floor. Try lying on the floor and drawing things from below. I used to do that to um, kids when I was doing uh, residencies in, in schools, I would say, hey kids, lie on the floor and draw this chair from beneath it. And you have all these kids lying on the ground. It's kind of cool. Or try and make things really abstracted. Yeah. Look at it that way to say, what would, what can I do so you can't even tell what this thing is? Maybe draw it from really super close up, you know, like a microscopic view. Creativity is key. All right, so I'm not alone in missing Garrison Keeler. Yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a lot of people being bored by things. Here's Kathleen being bored by her Roomba. Have you never noticed that it was boring before? Maybe you should spruce it up. Add some decorations. Come on, it's it's cruising all around your house. Maybe it needs to, uh, you know, wear a hat or something. Maybe we'll have a Roomba dress-up party next week. What do you think? Yes, Lenore, where all the kids are above average, right? It's true. What was it? All the women, all the men are good looking. All the women are strong. The men are good looking, and the kids are the children are above average. Yes. Um, what type of fountain pen am I using today? Holly asks. I'm using ye old trusty Lamy Safari. Um, you should get an endorsement deal from Lamy Safari, don't you think? Don't you think that would be correct? I love the Lamy. You know, here's the thing I thought of. Didn't bring many ink cartridges with me. They're all in New York. And I've heard that Amazon's taking up to a month to deliver stuff. So today I might have to go on and order a bunch of art supplies and hope that they show up. Because I don't know how long we're going to be here. We've been, we left New York two and a half weeks ago. And um, two 
two and a half weeks. It's going to be three weeks on Tuesday. We had a friend yesterday who said she's here in in, uh, in Phoenix, and she had initially invited us to to kind of come over and have some sort of like I don't know um, some kind of a visit where we would socially distance ourselves while <laughs> while chatting. I don't know how that was going to work. Like maybe we would sit in our cars or something. Anyway, but then she got a bit anxious about it and she decided that because we were from New York, we wouldn't be safe. It's like, really? We left New York three weeks ago. We're perfectly fine. We didn't bring any New York boogadoo fever with us. We're here, but suddenly being a New Yorker is, now people have a new reason to fear and hate New Yorkers. That's what we needed. Oh, well, which is the price living in New York, one more thing to consider changing. Yeah. So if you encounter any New Yorkers, please be kind to to them. They can't help that they live in the epicenter of the plague. They're nice. sure they would be willing to wear masks and gloves when they talk to you on a video chat. So, yeah. Herta says, Amazon still delivers promptly unless you order wipes and sprays. Really? Because I ordered a book and a jigsaw puzzle. And Amazon Prime took five days. And that was a week ago. So I shudder to think now, but but if I mean they might also say, you know what, the guy is ordering fountain pen cartridges, get them to him stat. Are you kidding? Can't have the guy sitting around waiting for fountain pen cartridges. Could be. So I'm gonna try it out today. We tried to order something from the supermarket the other day. They have an app. And they will, you know, you order stuff and they they, uh, do, they bring it out to your car in the parking lot. And they said it would take three days to get a slot. A slot that, um, whoops, sorry, you can't even see my guy. Um, a slot for an appointment. We're bringing food out. So I think we're still going to do that, but it seems like a, it seems like a you know, less than um, immediate gratification on that. Having to wait several days for my evaporated milk and my, what else, my Necco wafers and um, my uh, powdered eggs. Have you gotten to the point of starting to wonder what you miss? Like, what a, the first when I get out, the first thing I'm going to do is have a slice of pizza. Or the first thing I'm going to do is, I mean, I've heard a lot of people saying that they don't really wash, wash their hair anymore because they nobody ever sees them. Don't really have that problem, as you can see. But uh, yeah, what are the things that we're we've given up that we yearn for besides fountain pen refills. So there are a bunch of boring things, nine of them. keep drawing. I'm just going to sit here and drink my coffee while you do it. I'm kind of like, you remember how while you're you're doing an exam, your teacher would just sit there at their desk. Reading a magazine. That's what grown-ups get to do. What does Giselle say here? 
In France, we are allowed to go to the grocery store, but the nearest to our house and not for too long. Yeah. You know, here actually, here actually, we uh, don't even have a lockdown. Like, there's no mandatory anything in Phoenix so far. They're saying that they, that basically what's been going on in New York, we're going to get in a couple of weeks. So, I don't know what that means exactly. The idea that Phoenix in a couple of weeks will be like New York. Oh, you want to see a picture of where I'm saying? Maybe, how about a drawing? Maybe I'll do that one day. I'll give you a little tour of this palatial mansion in which I'm in. <laughs> yes. So Kat wants to meet her new grand. So you have, so you had a baby, your grand, your kid had a baby and you didn't get to see it yet. That, that's, that must be awful. Darren, this is the motorway. Yeah, I don't have a car, so I don't really miss that. I, I was going to say the subway, but I don't really miss that. Um, Allie misses having a caf a coffee out in a cafe. I know. I keep reflecting. You know what we're actually going to do? I think this weekend is our wedding anniversary. So, um, so we are thinking we might order something delivered from a restaurant. We haven't done that yet, so that might be our big. Patty misses visiting the, the bookshop and the fabric shop. Yeah. Yeah, bookshops. We don't even really have that many books here. But, you know, I have been buying books on my Kindle virtually every day. And I've been sort of listening to books on Audible, which is something I don't really do, but I've been kind of doing it more. A kalimba. I'm not even sure what that is. Is that a musical instrument, Allie? Kalimba. Um... Nancy misses walking on the beach. Yeah, I miss walking in the Washington Square Park. I miss things I'm never going to get back, like walking my dogs in Washington Square Park. But I lost my dogs a long time ago. Although I have to say, when this is over, we're getting a dog. Now no flower in stores. That's sad. No flower? That's a first. I haven't heard that before, but how strange. Who would have ever thunk that we would have flower shortages in 2020? Hmm. Nils misses a bike ride. Uh, people are riding bikes all over the place in Phoenix. I don't know if that's like a shutdown thing, like that's considered frivolous and dangerous in other places. Um, I don't know. Um, Ray suggests evaporated milk, a tea bag, and a cardamom pod. That sounds like some sort of ersatz chai. Is that what it is? I miss having tea. I brought some tea bags with me, but somehow, I don't know, the Phoenix water doesn't taste quite right to me, so I haven't even bothered. And the idea of having a cup of tea with evaporated milk, I just assume not go there, so I'm just drinking coffee. Yeah. Three weeks for supermarket delivery in London, says Sarah. That's insane. Three weeks. Esther's too old to go to the grocery store, <clears throat> but she can walk the dog. <clears throat> That's good. That's good. My sister, who is in Oxford, said that um, each you can walk your dog, and so each, she and her son and her daughter are all taking turns walking the dog, so the dog gets like six walks a day. <clears throat> I think that's pretty amusing. The normal is going, going to church. I thought about that. We walked by a church yesterday, and I thought, how strange for a church to be closed, right? I mean, when are churches ever closed? But probably in medieval times they were, maybe. Yeah. People wishing me happy anniversary. Thank you so much. I am very lucky to have a good wife who... Uh, who now my sister-in-law has decided is that my wife is actually the wife of everybody because she's doing what I guess are considered traditional wifely things. This is 2020, but nonetheless, yes, my wife is, she cleaned the fridge, she cooks us dinner. She really likes doing that. My wife likes the calm. She feels calmed by making beds and vacuuming. It's always been the case. I've, I've fought with her. I've fought with her over vacuuming. 
Karen's inviting me to social distance on her patio. That's so nice. Thank you. Um, wants to sketch it. Oh, down, downtown. Yeah. I haven't really been downtown, at least since we've been here. It's very nice down there, though. It's a lot of old, kind of old houses and stuff. Oh, yes. Thank you, Esther. A kalimba is a thumb piano, of course. Those, yes. That'll be nice. It'll be nice to learn. Indiana has no bread. Everybody's baking. West African. Is it West African? Yes. Moira wants to know how to draw grain. You know, I'll show you sometime. I, I basically draw grain by, like I draw anything else by looking at it carefully and drawing the individual lines. There's no particular thing, but I'm, uh, in this case, I'm often using the back of my fountain pen, the back of the nib, which is narrower. So, or the flower in Phoenix, but plenty of flowers. That's nice. That's nice. I wonder if we haven't tried to bake anything yet. Oh, no, no, that's not true. My wife baked a cake for my sister-in-law's birthday last weekend. I think it was from, a, from like a box. Haircuts. How are we going to cut our own hair now? That'll be interesting. You'll see me actually develop hair. You can see there's some of it actually. Um, maybe I can get these other people in this house to cut my hair. You can make your own distilled water. Yeah. You mean like like evaporating it and dripping it down and doing all that? I guess that's like a high school uh, sort of chemistry experiment where you like steam and then you let it cool. Wow, that would be a lot of trouble to go to for a cup of tea. I think I'm going to stick with coffee because it's not worth the risk. Um, Phoenix water is fairly bad. It's true. We've been drinking it out of various other things. Um, yes, Grace. <laughs> Pakistani way. It's true. In pa Grace's husband is from Pakistan, and uh, when I was a kid in Pakistan, we used to boil all the water. We, or we had we had servants; they would boil the water, and then we would have bottles of frosty bottles of water in the fridge. Ah, boy, well, this has been really nice. It's nice to sit sitting around chatting, isn't it? I hope you're continuing to do these little drawings, though. Um, Javier asked me, says, thank you for having published your book, Art, Art Before Breakfast, in Spanish. It's true. It's the only book of mine that's ever appeared in Spanish. Um, what is it? I, I can't remember it. I know. Is it Desayuno? It's breakfast? Yeah. It was, it's so nice to see foreign editions in my books. That particular book, I think, has been, it's in Korean, it's in Chinese, it's in German, it's, I think, in Russian. It's nice. Um, so I think all these things that people are doing, right, where um, Charmaine cut her husband's hair, Holly is, I love to vacuum with my Dylan and hand was dishes. Does that mean that you're vacuuming while listening to Bob Dylan? Or do you have somebody named Dylan who's helping you? Or is vacuum? I'm not sure what that means, but it sounds intriguing. Um, Rebecca, her, her local art store delivers. That's great. Where are you? You're not in New York. Oh, Dyson. Sorry. Holly keeps, okay, yes, Dyson, not Dylan. Um, people giving themselves bad haircuts. Maybe, that, maybe that'll be a thing we'll do next time or at some time in the future is we'll draw some self-portraits at this moment. We'll probably want to have that. We'll probably want to look back and go, I wish I'd done a self-portrait. I wish I knew what, I, what that terrible haircut that I was, that my husband gave me. The bowl cut. Uh, Havawort is explaining, make your own distilled water, take a large pot, put tap water in it, put a bowl inside that, turn the lid of the pot upside down, put it on, okay, I'm kind of with you, 
You can even put ice cubes in the lid to increase the amount of condensation forming on the underside and dripping into your bowl. Okay, I'll try it, maybe. No, I think I'll just stick to coffee. Coffee somehow doesn't seem to care. Amanda's hair is changing color. Same here. Is it a trend that I set? My hair's turning white. I gotta start coloring it again. I've always had a fantasy about coloring my hair. Never done it. Bleach it, blue, one of those things. Well, all right, guys, let's pack it in. Let's move on. Keep drawing these little things. Share them with me. You know what to do if you want to share them. Um, hashtag SBS Drawing Party. Um, and uh, I'll see you next weekend. Uh, next week. We're taking the weekend off. Probably not going to do any work. Probably not going to be on the internet. Going to be cleaning going to be, I think the weather's going to be really nice, so catch some rays, and um, I don't know, think of some new stuff to do. So let's get together next week, Monday, noon, Eastern time, 9 a.m. here in Phoenix, not sure what time your place, and uh, keep drawing, I'm telling you, keep drawing, you'll be glad you did, you'll be glad you, you will be glad in the moment as you're doing it. You'll be glad when you look back on the this plague sketchbook you have, and uh, it'll be nice. Bye-bye. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.